Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I am your host, Brian Scott. Today, it is a delight to read a channeling from Quo. Quo is a group of higher density beings channeled through LL Research. LL Research has been around for 50 years. You can certainly find a lot more about Quo from my interview with Jim McCarty, my interview with LL Research, and the hundreds of different channelings that I've read in the past. They generally answer questions of a spiritual nature and have been very helpful on my own spiritual path. As they always tell you, you take what resonates and you forget about what doesn't. Today I have some channelings that focus on the will, how to focus the will, what weakens the will, how the will works in a positively polarizing entity. We begin with a channeling delivered on November 7th, 2015. Quote, our question today is what are those thoughts, activities, and energies which strengthen, intensify, and focus the will? Also, and conversely, what are those thoughts and activities which dissipate, diffuse, and weaken the will? And finally, if you could speak to the point of what the highest function or use of the will is for the positively polarizing entity. Jim Channeling. I am Quo, and we greet each of you in love and in light this day. My friends, it is a great privilege for us to be with you, for we have listened to your circle of seeking. We see your hearts have laid bare your journey into that limitless love that lies before each of you. You come from the reality of your third density illusion, and you bring purely that desire to seek the truth, as it is called the truth of the unity of all things. In that truth, and in that love, and in that unity, we are honored to greet you this day. We would, as always, ask that you take those words we have to share with you, as you say, a grain of salt, taking those that have meaning for you, that strike home for you, and leave behind those that do not. If you will do this for us, it will be a great aid in our service to you. And we will have no fear of forcing words upon you, which may cause you to take them without thought. This day, you've asked about that quality which you have called the will. How to aid it, how to hinder it, and how to best use it. This is an excellent question, my friends, for within your illusion, your will is that which propels you through it. Indeed, however you are able to go through it is a function of how well your will is working for you, how well you are able to use your will and to focus it, for you are creatures of free will. No one truly decides for you. They may offer you suggestions, they may offer advice, they may offer you inspiration, they may offer you examples. However, what you do with that which is offered to you is your choice as it must be. For if your life experience is to have any meaning, it must be the result of your own choosing, your own directing, your own experiences, and so it is. We would say that your will can also be described as that which is desire or a purified desire. For what you desire, you put your energies towards achieving. Within the illusion about you, there is much of a material sense which is desired by most. Position, family, remuneration, recognition, and so forth. For those who aim, shall we say, more toward the heart for the meaning of your existence, there is also consideration in the regard to which the purpose for the life pattern. Who are you as an entity that has a life pattern to complete? And what is the meaning of it all? Why are you here? What has brought you here? How shall you travel through this illusion? And what is the purpose of it? Those qualities which strengthen your will are the qualities which meet whatever your prior desire is. If you look within your meditative state, or your contemplative state, or your prayerful state to the nature of your heart, what it is that you feel is truly worthwhile. Towards that will, you focus your will. If you wish to improve your will, look toward what you truly desire, then exercise your will. Much as any mental or physical muscle, it may be strengthened by exercise. But exercise in what direction? In the direction of that which fulfills your heart, that which expresses your heart's desire, that which can answer those questions of who you are, why you are here, 
and how it is you shall live your life. When you can answer these questions to your own satisfaction, realizing you may not find the final answer at first, but use whatever answers you find to fuel your practice of will, your exercise of will, your focus of will, then you put your will in service to the highest and best that you can feature within your own consciousness. This is our recommendation to you for how to exercise the will and how to use it in a strengthened fashion, shall we say. At this time, we shall transfer this contact to the one known as Steve. We are those of Quo, Steve Channeling. I am Quo and am with this instrument. We greet you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator. We return now to the circumstance which is quite usual among your people and among those who dwell in third density generally that the will as it is conceived and the desire as it is felt are not in complete alignment with each other. In this circumstance, the seeker can feel quite out of sorts, quite lost and unable to even address the deeper question about who the self desires to become. For my friends, your experience in this density in which you find yourself so veiled from the deeper awareness of who you are is a process of becoming. It is the becoming of who you want to be, but also a becoming of who you already are. And in that paradoxical circumstance, each of you finds that for the most part, the pathway of your life experience is muddled and unclear. So to find your way through the fogs of confusion, through the mists of doubt, and through the pathways of recrimination and regret, you need again and again to step back from those experiences which are most immediate and most compelling to you and take a little distance. If you will, take an opportunity to reflect on how in this particular situation you might find the opportunity to serve. Now, serving is what you might call a very big word because if it is a function earnestly undertaken, it is one full of intent. But intent is not always of one description. Intent can have hidden passageways, shall we say, and it can have false faces. And therefore, it is useful when you seek to serve others around you and to be helpful that you ask yourself two questions. The first and most immediate question, who am I who seeks to serve? And the second question, who is this to whom my service is offered? My friends, we must tell you that the answer to both questions would be largely concealed, so you must find your way with a hope and a prayer, so to speak, about who you actually are as the agent of the service and who it actually is is the recipient. Only when these two elements are brought together Does one have service actually effectuated? Only when these two elements are brought together do we have the fulfillment of the calling that the service represents. But it is a calling which ever and again must listen to the source to renew itself in the intention that comes forth. In this way, it can be the case that the nature of service is transformed even in the offering of the service itself. One does not know who one is that would offer the service, but one aspires to be the most serviceable. Or maybe one does not know who it is that would receive the service. And in fact, one very often discovers that the service on offer is a service refused. And this gives one the opportunity to revisit yet again the source, the intent behind the service, which very often finds no way forward with its current plan, shall we say. A plan is something which each of you is well accustomed to make. A plan is an outline of how an activity or a set of activities may proceed. And it is customary to make a plan and then to align one's will with the plan that has been made. The difficult moment then comes when circumstances arise in which a plan that has been made is seen not to be particularly fitting for the situation one discovers one is in. At the point at which this initial discernment comes upon one, it is well to step back and to ask whether there is perhaps an overinvestment in the plan at hand to step back and to ask who the planner has been, to step back and ask whether the plan best befits the service that is intended. Now this can be a difficult process because it is not an easy matter to separate the elements of planning from the feelings of desire to serve. These are generally pressed together in a rather compact way, so much so that it can seem like one's entire being is being rejected by the one who prefers not to receive the gift of service one has put forward. One feels that the fact that the service is not found to be desired by the other party suggests that one's own person is being rejected 
and sometimes the gesture of rejection or the expression of denial can be forceful enough that it is most difficult not to take this point of view. Once again, at this point we suggest that a stepping back or strategic withdrawal is most useful, that during those little acts of meditation that can bestrew your days can be invoked for the purpose of regathering the self and making a new plan, so to speak. It is not always an occasion propitious for going forward with any plan that one could make at the spur of the moment, in which case it is simply advisable to go your own way. We find, my friends, that it is most usual among your people that minds are torn this way and that, that they are drawn to one thing, then another, and that there is such a confusion of responsibilities, of duties, of callings for service of this kind or that, that one hardly knows how to proceed in a clear and integrated way. The confusion itself, however, has a certain value insofar as it reflects a confusion that has bubbled up to the surface of your life experience. From your own deeper nature and the practice of sorting out the possibilities of service, the practice of sorting out the individual desires and the individual acts of will that might be mated with these desires. These practices, we say, need to be integrated and can be in the course of a life experience a little bit at a time. So while it may be true that one is getting from this or that individual or this or that particular circumstance, only a partial or a distorted reflection of the service that one offers, this partiality can be seen as a gift of its own, can be seen as an element in the process of learning to discover the true self, learning to discover the self who truly wills, learning to discover the self who truly desires. So while we may say in a general sense, that will and desire, when properly seen, converge into a single phenomenon, very often it turns out that they are not in convergence at all, and that the two moments or two elements are crying out, so to speak, for that kind of healing that can take place when they are brought into alignment. The will is strengthened when it feels itself fed by desire. Desire is straightened when it feels itself brought in relation to the will. The will and the desire are not two things, but one. The one, however, is also two. And so, my friends, you perceive through the life experience, with now a sense of strong purpose and clear direction, and now a sense of utter confusion and loss of self. This is the way that third density experience, veiled experience, is meant to be. You know not who you are, but do well to be about the business of finding out. You very often know not what you desire, but do well to be about the business of finding out. And sometimes it will seem that the desire that you discover within is one you can hardly approve. Who is this that so heartedly disapproves of the desire which it nevertheless must own as its own? Who is this that must learn to acknowledge that it has desires which it wishes perhaps it did not? Who is it that can desire even against a grain of desire and finds itself twisted into quite a pretty pretzel as a result. Who is it indeed? It is I. You must whisper to yourself. It is I. It is I who desire. But it is I who desire to desire ever more clearly. It is I who desire to desire in accordance with the desire that I approve. And you might ask, what has gone into this process of, of value which I embrace in order to approve what desires I wish to strengthen and what desires I wish to allow to find their way into a condition of having been expended or used up. We put the matter in this way in order to suggest to you that we find it unhelpful to use the value which you have discerned within yourself, to use the value that you have aligned your will with, to judge harshly those desires which you have decided you wish not to promote. A desire simply is life announcing itself within your own person. But life is multifarious and can be quite random in its expression. It can run the full travel from fear to joy and back again in a heartbeat. And it is the practice of those who have gained experience in dealing with the life force and dealing with the vagrant friend one calls desire to learn to give it opportunities for self-expression that have a better chance of being aligned with other opportunities for self-expression 
that more and more come to express a self which is the self, you are learning that you truly are. That which you truly are can on occasion be glimpsed through the mist of catalyst, through the mists of the stray and random energies one is surrounded by upon a daily basis. For out of these mists there can appear, glimmering at first, but more clearly as you proceed, a sense of who you are becoming, a sense of that which calls you to become who you feel you truly are. My friends, we can tell you that which announces itself within your person as desire is flexible enough that it can be transformed as it is given the opportunity to find its expression in ever higher modalities. Thus it is well to desire, to serve, and it is even better to allow this desire to serve to be transformed in the process of practicing the activity of serving. It is well to have a plan, but it is better to allow that plan to reshape itself as the realization comes about that there is for it perhaps a clear mode of expression, that there is for it perhaps a truer correspondence with the will that is, even as you contemplate the matter in the process of formulating itself anew. And in this way one can find that the self does not feel so much the need to be defended. The self does not feel so much the sense that it is enclosed upon itself. The self does not feel so much that the will that it expresses belongs to it alone. It is a will which may be seen as the will of the Creator. But who is the Creator? Who is the Creator but the one who here and now would create? And here and now one finds that to create. The Creator requires the cooperation of the little self. This little system of desires and intentions and yes, doubts and hesitations that I have always called myself. And so the great process of the spiritual evolution goes on, my friends. As the little self gets a little less itself and a little more creative day by day, effort by effort, good intention by good intention, hope by hope, and joy by joy. We are those of Quo and we have enjoyed being with you upon this autumn day. We thank you for hearing our words and at this time we leave this instrument in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator and return to the one known as Jim to discover whether there are still questions upon the mind of those here. Adonai, my friends. Adonai. Jim Channeling. I am Quo and I am once again with this instrument. We pause. I am Quo and we are again with this instrument and would ask if there might be any further queries to which we may speak from those within this circle of seeking. Gary, Quo, you spoke amply, insightfully, and if I may add beautifully to the first and third portions of the group question. Would you also be able to speak directly to the second question which asks, what are those thoughts and activities which dissipate, diffuse, and weaken the will? I am Quo, and am aware of your query, my brother. We apologize for falling short in our answering of your query in all of its portions. Those qualities which tend to weaken the will are those which would weaken an entity's ability to make choices in a clear and rational fashion. For when an entity finds there is doubt which may not be addressed and which takes its place in the forefront of the mind, then this is one quality which weakens that which you call the will. Such a will will remain in a weakened state until there is information or inspiration available to the seeker which can resolve or remove said doubt. We find that it is the primary cause of most entities' inability to exercise the will. For when information is lacking, or the desire to find information is lacking, then the will has no means by which to be exercised. This oftentimes begins uh, what you would call downward spiral of decision making and movement of the mind-body-spirit complex along the line of the evolutionary process, where oftentimes there is a weakening of information, a weakening of processing of information, and a weakening of the desire for seeking information that can resolve doubt and reinvigorate the quality of the will. There is what you may call the catch-22 in such a situation until one can generate sufficient pure desire or will to work upon this blockage of the will, then the will remains blocked. The difficulties in searching and seeking for that which can dissipate doubt are oftentimes experienced 
by those who have just, shall we say, entered the conscious portion of the path of seeking the truth and have not yet discovered how to deal with the setbacks, the turns and twists upon the trail that the doubting seeker shall surely find. There is the necessity in such cases for the blending of the energies with others of like mind. For within the group of seeking souls, there can be the encouragement to the young seeker that it be able to overcome the doubts, to move past the difficulties, and to reassert itself in its own journey of seeking its inner truth. Oftentimes, such doubt is placed there by others who have less regard for the process of seeking, shall we say, and may question the entity in ways in which it is unable to answer and unable to fathom how to make a portion of its own journey when the queries are either not properly understood or properly addressed by the seeker. This is sometimes the assistance that a group of like minds can give to those within the group that may fail from time to time in the exercise of the will and the continuance of the seeking. Those who are willing to seek together are more likely to find that which is sought, and we recommend the joining together of all entities who wish to find the Holy Grail, shall we say, upon the journey so that each may lend assistance to each. This is a journey which is not meant to be made, shall we say, entirely by oneself, although in its very essence it is a singular journey which no one else can travel for you. However, those friends and associates who are on similar journeys can lend an assistance of inspiration or of example so that each within the group is bolstered and strengthened by such sharing of the love of the seeking, the love of the journey, and the love of those within the group. Is there a further query, my brother? Gary, on that question, no. That reply would certainly inspire me to stop dissipating my will through indulgence in self-doubt. Thank you. I am, quote, we thank you, my brother. Is there another query within this group? Is there, quote, an instance where will becomes overbearing? I am, quote, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. You ask an interesting point in this regard. This is a possibility which is not often seen. However, it is one which does have its own reality in those entities who have had success, shall we say, in other areas of seeking besides that which you may call the metaphysical journey of seeking the truth. Perhaps there has been success in the material world in obtaining those objects, items, and stations of respect and abundance, and these attainments may make the entity who has achieved them feel that it is, shall we say, all-powerful, that the exercise of will in this regard can become that which can aid others even when they are not asked, shall we say. In such cases, we recognize that the successful application of will in one area may give the portion of the mind, which you have related as the ego mind, a false sense of security, and even a mission, shall we say, that it make other entities aware of its success and lead them along a similar path. However, this type of success is not that which can be passed on in a one-to-one -one sense in most cases, for there is the necessity for any potential follower to be able to choose that path for itself. And when one has had such success and wishes to impart it or impose it upon others, then there will be the dissonance between the goals of each entity so that there is little success that is experienced by the followers and only the sense of being subservient and in control of another, shall we say. In such instances, it is hoped that the entity which attempts to impose its will upon another can see itself reflected in the mirrors of those about it, who tend to shy away from such a powerful imposition of the will of another upon themselves. Is there a further query, my brother? No, thank you. I am quoting, we thank you, my brother. Is there a final query for this afternoon? A short one, quote, how would you define a strong will for a positively polarized entity? I am quote, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. Those positively polarized entities who exhibit the strong will, shall we say, are those who have been able to increase the nature of their own beingness so that the positivity begins to be shown about one, much as the sun upon a cloudless day. Such entities are more likely to show by example than by word, are most likely to seek to share in service when asked, 
and are most likely to continue their journey of seeking in a solitary fashion in every level of their daily endeavors so that there is no portion of the daily round of experience that does not benefit from what this entity seeks within. For a positively polarized spiritual seeker seeks the one and finds the one everywhere where there is nothing but the one. Such an entity will see the creator and give the creator the love that is the creator's own given to this entity and shared back and forth. For such a seeker, the daily round of activities is a continuing opportunity to seek and share the love of the one infinite creator. We are most appreciative to you, my friends, each and every one, for allowing us to speak to you this afternoon. It has been our great privilege we see this circle of seeking as a great source of light that reaches beyond this dwelling place into the realms of the metaphysical, where many are aware of such a seeking and rejoice with you. At your seeking, lend their energies to it, especially when asked. For these are also forces of light that seek in service to others. We would at this time take our leave of this instrument and of this group. We leave each as always and as we find you in the love and in the light of the one infinite creator, we are known to you as those a quote. Adonai, my friends. Adonai. And this concludes this channeling. Let's look at a definition of will as it's discussed in the Law of One. This may help us to better understand this channeling. It's described as pure desire, the motivation or impetus within an individual that becomes awakened and harnessed when directed towards service and spiritual seeking. Will could also be seen as the attraction to the upward spiraling line of light, guiding spiritual evolution. It is the single measure of the rate and fastidiousness of the activation and balancing of the various energy centers. The will can be conscious or unconscious. The unconscious utilization of will possibly depolarizing the individual in their seeking. The faculty of will has been greatly enhanced by the veiling in conjunction with faith. The seeker's will is a vital aspect of many aspects of service and seeking, from the simple utilization of catalyst for evolution to the opening of gateway to intelligent infinity. So the key point to remember is there's a discussion between desire and will. And while they're similar, they point out that they can be quite different. You can desire one thing and have a will for another. This energy, this idea, this movement within yourself to do or take some action comes from a desire or a will, a motivation or an impetus within you that becomes awakened and harnessed. They are speaking of service because that's what they're always speaking about. But it can be towards anything. And the service that you're providing can vary in many different ways. What is it you desire? And then there is an energy that allows you to move towards that desire that you want. And this is a process of spiritual evolution. So it's obviously very important and key to understanding your spiritual path. In the raw material, in session 6.1, they explain that the mind controls the body. With the mind single-pointed, balanced, and aware, the body comfortable in whatever biases and distortions make it appropriately balanced for that instrument. The instrument is then ready to proceed with the great work in regards to energy powers and healing. That is the work of wind and fire. The spiritual body energy is a pathway or channel. When body and mind are receptive and open, then the spirit can become a functioning shuttle or communicator from the entity's individual energy of will upwards and from the streamings of the creative fire and wind downwards. This is the first mention of the word will in the raw material. It's important because it's a portion of the soul, the soul uses the will as a shuttle to create the experiences that you have in your life. And it gives you the power and energy and focus of what you're doing in your life. They explain in session 10, number 14, Ra says, the conscious statement of self to self of the desire to seek love is so central an act of will that as before the loss of power due to this friction is inconsequential, meaning that when you choose to seek out love, 
to be of service, it is an act of will. And so in my own case, I had this very powerful moment. It felt like something special was happening, that it was recorded in history. I'm sitting on my couch and I could feel this will, this desire within me boiling up that was different than other desires I'd had in my life. And energetically, I looked at my life and the things that I had done. And I said, I choose to make the rest of my life to be of service to others. And that is my will. And this will was a throttle for me. It pushed me in a very unusual direction energetically and by motivation and inspiration. Everything changed for me. And it came from my own will in doing so. I believe the will is an important part of the manifestation process in creating your reality. It is an energy of creation beyond just the desire. The desire can be there, but you have no will to do it. So it's in combination with the will. You have this great desire to do something. And then the will is this energy that pushes you along to do that thing that you want. If you go back and listen to this, you can see the things that take away your will, even though you have a great desire to do something. And this can be anything that you want, anything that you're trying to manifest. And there are things that empower your will and there are things that pull back on your will. But mostly, they're talking about the will in relation to your desire to be of service. Once you completely shift your consciousness into this desire for service, there is really no other desire. It is an overwhelming desire. And they are talking about what you see in others, how you view these others around you. When you start to see that the others around you are you, there's suddenly a very intense desire to be of service. And suddenly some sort of fuel is added to this. It's the spark to the gasoline. There's a push for you. Okay, I have this desire to be of service and now I wanna be of service. How can I be of service? And you start moving along just like the railroad starts with the coal and it starts chugging along boom that's where the will gets involved so while this may sound complicated and hard to understand it is very powerful and simple an important part of our spiritual process as they indicate the will was not there when the veil was gone when everybody knows the creator's there and all is good as they indicate in the law of one in earlier planets in the galaxy when the planet started, they didn't have the veil between the subconscious and the subconscious. So people just chilled. They were like, it's all good. And there was no will. So the will started to form itself when this veil formed between our subconscious and conscious minds. And it does define our choices, whether we choose service to self or others. It's an important part of what we're doing. So ask yourself, what are you willing to do? What is your will allowing you to do? What is your desire and how do these things come together? You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. You'd make my day if you checked out my art at www.newearth.art. New art every day. I'm sending you all my love and light. I'm honored to say these words. Go out and have a fantastic day. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.